Hi everyone. Welcome back to Frappe School. This is the 5th chapter in our advanced accounting course. Today, we will be discussing cost centers and accounting dimensions. By the end of this chapter, you will learn what are cost centers, what are accounting dimensions and how to configure them in ERP next. Let's first talk about what cost centers and accounting dimensions are. A cost center is a part of an organization where costs or income can be charged. In other words, it can be used as a profit center. Most businesses have multiple activities like different product lines, market segments, areas of business, etc. that share some common overheads. They could ideally have their own structure to show whether they are profitable or not. Having a cost center classification helps you to analyze and generate reports accordingly. Accounting dimensions. Dimensional accounting means tagging each transaction with appropriate dimensions like branch, business unit, etc. Dimensional accounting helps curb the ever increasing need for real time detailed information where users are forced to multiply the number of segments in their chart of accounts. Over time, the number of general ledger accounts continuously grow and without proper controls. Having accounting dimensions allow you to maintain each segment separately, thereby keeping your general ledger accounts and chart of accounts clean and organized. Cost center and project are treated as accounting dimensions by default in ERP Next. In ERP Next, we can configure cost centers and accounting dimensions and link them to other accounting documents like budgets and accounting periods. These are seamless accounting in an organization and make sure that there are clean diversifications and sections for different kinds of sectors of revenue and expenses. First, let's explore cost centers. As we talked about, a cost center is a part of an organization where expenses or income can be charged. In ERP next, we can create a cost center tree. Let's see the cost center tree first. We can navigate to it using the awesome bar. Here, we can see our company and the already added cost centers listed under it. We can add more cost centers by clicking on the add new button. Naming the cost center, for example, online sales and then defining if this is a group or not by using this checkbox. Once all the details are added, we can click on create new. We can even add cost centers under pre-created ones by clicking on Add Child. Now, let us see what a distributed cost center is. A distributed cost center has multiple cost centers tagged inside it. And divided by percentage. This comes in use when we want to automate manual entry processes. Let's create a distributed cost center. We can search for new cost center in the awesome bar. Once we open the document, we will first name this cost center and tag a parent cost center. For example, sales. Next, we will need to select the enable distributed cost center checkbox. Now, the distributed cost center table will show up. Here, we can tag multiple cost centers and allocate percentages to them. For example, let's click on add row and select a cost center. Here, we can allocate 50%. Similarly, we can add more and make sure the total percentage adds up to 100. Once done, we can save this distributed cost center. Let's quickly try creating a budget against the cost center we just created. 
to view the budget list, we can navigate to the accounting module and go to budget under the cost center and budgeting section. We can even search for it directly in the awesome bar. Here, we can see a list of previously created budgets and add a new one by clicking on add budget button. Once it opens, we will first select the budget against field. We can either create a budget for a cost center, project or an accounting dimension that we have created. Let's select cost center for this example. Next, we will select the actual cost center against which we want to create this budget. Let's select the cost center we created earlier. We can next define the financial year for this budget and then add a monthly distribution. The monthly distribution field helps define the portions of the budget that will be allotted to every month of the year. This helps improve efficiency and keep a check on monthly spendings. If we don't specify any monthly budget, then ERP Next will calculate the budget in equal proportion for every month. In the budget accounts table, we can select an income or expense account for which this budget is being set. We can add multiple accounts if we want and once done, we can save and permanently submit this budget. Next, let's see how we can link cost centers in various transactions. First, let's go to sales invoice. Go to sales invoice list and open a new one. We can see that in the accounting dimension section, we can select a specific cost center. We can do the same with purchase invoices. If we open a purchase invoice, we can see that while creating it, we can tag a cost center under the accounting dimension section where we want to allocate this transaction. Next, let's try creating a cost center in a journal entry. We can access the journal entry list from the awesome bar. Here, when we add an entry in the accounting entry table, there is an accounting dimension section where we can select our cost center. While creating a payment entry, we can scroll down to the accounting dimension section and tag a cost center. Then we can add the rest of the details and save. Lastly, we can tag a cost center while creating a delivery note as well. We can access the delivery note list from the awesome bar and create a new delivery note. We can open the accounting dimension section where we can select our cost center. As we can see, tagging the correct and applicable cost center in each transaction makes it easier to maintain seamless ledgers and have correct accounting. Now, let's move on to accounting dimensions. Accounting dimensions are different segments that can be maintained separately so that the account remains clear and seamless. In ERP Next, we can create configurable accounting dimensions and use them in transactions and reports. So instead of creating multiple ledgers, we can create different accounting dimensions. For example, ERP Next considers cost centers and projects as built-in accounting dimension. If required, you can add branches as a custom dimension. We can create custom accounting dimensions by going to the accounting dimensions under the settings section in the accounting module, or we can search for it in the awesome bar. Here, we can see all present accounting dimensions and we can add a new one by clicking on add accounting dimension button. First, we will have to select a reference doc type 
that we want to use as a custom dimension. For example, if we want to select branch, then this account dimension will be based on branch. Next, we will name this dimension. The name will appear in transactions. Now that we have named this dimension, we can mention company specific defaults in the dimensions defaults table. For example, we can click on add row, select the company and tag a default dimension. This dimension will be automatically fetched in the transaction against that specific company. We can use the mandatory for balance sheet checkbox to specify whether this dimension is mandatory in balance sheets or not and similarly the mandatory for profit and loss account checkbox to specify if it is mandatory there either. Once all of our details are added, we can save this accounting dimension and the system will create it for us. Once we have created our custom accounting dimensions, we can use them in sales or purchase transactions. Let's try it with a sales invoice. Let's navigate to the sales invoice list using the awesome bar and create a new one. Here, we can add the basic details. And then, in the accounting dimension section, see that along with cost center and project, the custom accounting dimension we created is visible too. Even in the items we add, specific dimensions can be selected for our convenience. Once we've filled in all the details, we can save and permanently submit this invoice. Another feature offered in ERP Next is that we can use specific accounting dimensions to filter reports. For example, let's look at the general ledger report. Here, there are various filters, but we can also enter the specific accounting dimensions in the business unit section and filter transactions linked to that. This brings us to the end of the fifth chapter in our advanced accounting course. I hope this helped you understand how cost centers and accounting dimensions can be used to streamline accounting. You can read more about ERP Next on docs.erpnext.com. In the next chapter, we will discuss how to handle deferred accounting and expenses in ERP next.